Let's get it on. I right, top billing. One of the more intriguing draft picks for the Seattle Seahawks had to be my man Mike Morris. Cats were racing to the channel. <laughs> they were racing to the channel to explain the pick because I guess they thought that I'd be making fun of Seattle for drafting yet another edge player when they already got about nine of them mama jumbles on the roster already. And people were out of breath. Just like, Murph, hold up, man. Oh, hold up. Uh, uh, they told me that uh, he was going to be a de defensive tackle. <laughs> I was like, damn, relax, bro. But my man right here shot me the news that said they were going to use Morris as a defensive tackle. Now, in the interest of full transparency here, I told him it seems weird when they could have just drafted an actual defensive tackle. Why experiment? Loved him as an edge. He's the type of edge the Patriots normally draft. Adelius Thomas. Morris is like that. I need to know if they are running a 3-4 because putting him on the inside in a 4-3 is mad goofy. In a 3-4, he's dope as a 5 technique. Cats keep coming to the channel talking about the Seahawks going back after one season to run in an even front alignment again. And I'm just puzzled and baffled about why they would do that. And the funny thing about it is the first couple of seasons I covered Seattle, everybody wanted them to run a 3-4. Then after one season, it seems like most of you people don't want them to run a 3-4 anymore. What changed? But I decided to finally do something that I said I wasn't going to do. But I'm a man about mine. I said I did it. I did it because you made me do it. He didn't stand up. I stood up for mine. I said, I did it. Mm -hmm. I did it because he made me do it. Great, listen, you don't have to worry about backing up from the table anymore. You're keeping them damn calories over, you hear me? Yeah. Uh oh, I just lost it. Uh, Nobody hung up on you. Listen, uh, let's get ready to go to work, man. Get you inside a three technique and uh, let's keep on growing. You got me? So your man, Coach Hurt, the defensive coordinator, clearly said three technique. And he was talking about him not needing to push away from the table and to pack those calories on. So, yeah, that would lead me to, be, to to think that he will be a three technique, which is a huge jump from being an edge outside linebacker. But it's an intriguing one. I will say that because of the athleticism, the short area athleticism he has. But then I read this right here. I believe Pete Carroll was asked about it. And if you see right here, Mike is going to be a defensive end for us. He'll play on the guard and play on the tackle, but he's going to have his hand on the ground for the most part. So all of this is still a bit ambiguous to me because I still can't tell, right? But if he's going to play, obviously, on the tackle, then that would make him a defensive end in a 3-4 more than likely, right? A five technique, like I said. Him as a six foot six, 295 to 305-pound technique, Five technique, yeah, that's hard. That is extremely hard because you still get to play in a little bit of space out there, right? Cramping him on the inside at a three technique, ah, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know. Check this out right here. All right, y'all, here's my interpretation of Seattle's defense. Since you guys told me, right, what did y'all tell me? And I asked, what's up with all the edge players on the roster, right? Why not go after other positions, right? You said that. Pete Carroll likes competition, right? So, so all, everybody gets a shot, right, on his base down, right, to compete, right? All six of the edge players, right? And technically, he did draft another edge player in Mike Morris. They just told him that they can't do it. He need to play a different position, right? They were all tapped out at the position, right? But if he could do seven, he would do that because you said that he wants to keep everyone fresh, right? One snap a piece. But how about this? They need to get a rhythm, right? Most teams get their edge players a rhythm because they're normally the best, most conditioned athletes on the damn team. So why not just play them all at once? So over here, we got Hall, Taylor, and Robinson. This is a 3-6 defense, right? I just invented that shit. Mafe, uh, you got uh, Tyreek Smith here and Uchenna Nuosu, right? So everybody gets a shot. But Mike Morris right here, to me, that adds some serious athleticism. Right there, that looks like Puna Ford. As much as I like a Puna Ford, he just is not that type of athlete. And you're playing him, right, and a legit, legitimate right here, this is, it's a five technique, right? He, to me, you want your five techniques to be a little bit longer. They're essentially defensive ends. Puna Ford is about five, six, Playing a five technique. They're trying to stop the run here. They were struggling against the Las Vegas Raiders there. I put Reed here because 
I didn't really see them go after one of these Mozzie Smith, Siaki Ika, 330-pound types. Uh, they got the cat from Mississippi State. Um, maybe he is 330. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, they got him a little later or whatever like that. So, But Jaron Reed has to be on the field. That guy, when I covered him the – before he left, uh, he was the man on that defensive front. There's no doubt about that. If he can capture, recapture some of that glory, I could kind of see him playing out of shade, right? But you get that type of athleticism between him, Morris, and then Draymond Jones. That boy's going to be cold, right? He can definitely play a three technique. He could play a five technique. And we saw him playing out here as well. So we know Pete Carroll loves that as well, right? You get that two seven defense, right? That would be hard. Absolutely hard. You know they don't do all that off-ball linebacker stuff. There's not even no off-ball linebackers back here. Right? You're 3-6. Everybody plays on the line of scrimmage, baby. Hey, I'm just playing. Somebody's going to get mad about that. Then I'm going to roast you. Now, check this drawing out right here. This man is six foot five, 295 pounds, playing <laughs> at an edge, obviously. And they're thinking about reducing him down, way down here to like a three technique. So imagine bringing this type of athleticism that he can work with on the outside, somewhere on the inside, right? It, to me, it would be a little bit better if they reduced him to right here. He's still in a pretty decent amount of space. But look at this right here. Oh, nauseous. Giving him nausea. Come on, man. Big man right there overset. My man set him up perfectly. Look at this. Baiting him like he's going to run the arc on him. Sticks that foot in the ground. Plays the hands perfectly like Excuse me, sir. I'm trying to get to your quarterback. Got my man right here all out of sorts, right? Heavy-legged, waist-bending cat right there. He's done. Straight up cooked. Excuse me, sir. I'm getting to your quarterback. Try to get a little help right here in the form of a hold. He breaks through that hold as well. He's on your quarterback, baby. Let's go. Fertilizes the quarterback. Oh, and look who comes in with him. Oh, your boy, Mozzie Smith. Damn. Y'all could have both them cats, too, right, on the same squad again. You got this cat at a fifth-round draft pick, though. He's so intriguing to me because of that type of athleticism. And then, obviously, they're not going to play him at an edge, reducing him on the inside. Thinking about cats who are six foot six, um, around 290 to 300 and 305 pounds and stuff like that. Man, these are some of those dudes that I absolutely loved back in the day. Look at him. Look at the type of space that they put him in. You damn near can say that he's at a nine technique in some of the spacing that he gets to be deployed from at Michigan. I remember this drawing against my Terps, too. It was sad. Look, he did it to Jalen Duncan, too, who ended up being drafted as well. It was a pretty good left tackle. Look at the power. Oh, gets up in his neck, drives Miss Daisy to a Tungo Valoa. Little brother Talia going down easy like a $2 hook. Damn. Look at that. Jalen does a pretty good job of, of evening it up, right? 50-50 exchange situation. You see this right here. Look, he gets that left hand to that right shoulder pad, stretches Jalen Duncan out. Look how tall the right side of his body is right now, right? He's a mountain of a man now. Just only on his right side, though, because Mike Moore stretched his ass out, right? Pause. And then you see him driving Miss Daisy. Look at the leg drive. Look at the power. That's hard. You already saw the athleticism. You can see the power right there. Talia, he was done. Fertilized. Speed and power. Or quickness. I hope he doesn't lose that streamlineness, right? Where if he doesn't push away from the table. Uh, that type of build, man, is like those, uh, I think, Chris Canny types, Richard Seymour types. Uh, he's just like that, man. He reminds me of those guys right here. This is technically him rushing from the inside. But obviously in a standing position. Look at him get skinny. Split the difference. And that's it. Look at that. Coming from a stand-up three technique here. All right, you can see the angle that he takes. To give him half a man on the inside. And he's a little bit more streamlined, streamlined than you would see most of the squattier players who are your three techniques. Who are usually more like 6'2", six, 6'3", six, or even 6'1". Look at him split the difference. This is a good move by him. It's actually looks like it's supposed to be a, a te stunt right he pushes he pushes the center out the way gets him out the way and then my man has to worry about the uh the tackle coming through right there and get skinny man and there you have it very crap 
type of, ooh, somebody needs to, ooh, it wouldn't happen in the game I was in. Somebody would have to get that ass. All right. Last drawing right here, man. I'm tired of these content ID claims. And I just know it's coming. So uh, you get Mike Morris right here. Look at your man with that inside approach. Look at this. Oh, look at the quickness. A, a lot of that has to do with how his body type is, too. He's just less surface area, right? Bates him to the outside, sticks that foot in the ground, then does the the kind of the arm over move, right? Arm over move with the inside hand, plays him perfectly right there. Put that hand on that elbow, push away, and you got a clear path to the quarterback. Quarterback barely got it off, though, right there, but obviously it's incomplete pass. Now, let's keep it real right here. I'm not saying he's Richard Seymour. I'm just talking about the body type and people – playing in a 3-4, NA 4-3 defense and where they played at. Richard Seymour was the prototypical defensive end in a 3-4, but he also played in a 4-3 and was able to play a three technique as well. So he's six foot six, 317 pounds, right? Well, he was the truth, right? He was a, uh, the no number six overall pick. So Mike Morris is definitely not in Richard Seymour's category at this particular point in time. But as far as body types go, I, I remember – the Dallas Cowboys. They had like three of these dudes who were like six foot six and above. This cat right here, Chris Canty, six foot seven, 320 pounds. So if they said they want Mike Morris to uh, get a little bit bigger, look at that. He was at six foot seven at the combine, 286 pounds. So even lighter than Morris, and he ended up at 320 pounds at six foot seven. So you can put a little bit more weight on these guys. Obviously, is a rule of thumb for every inch is 10 pounds of weight, if you get what I'm saying there. So while he's weighing 320 pounds, he won't look like a guy who's six foot one weighing 320 pounds. It's just a totally different body type, even though. Uh, he still has that size and that strength. The thing about that is, though, if you're playing these guys on the inside, sometimes it's just tough for these guys to bend. All right, so you got to be a good athlete. And I think Mike Morris is a good enough athlete to move inside, no doubt. Now, this dude right here was the truth, right? Another six foot six guy was a cowboy at the same time, a teammate of um, Canty. He was six foot six, two hundred sixty five pounds, though. So I was thinking Morris would go that route. Uh, he was a top ten pick. Greg Ellis was the truth at North Carolina. Uh, and he was 281 pounds, right? 6'5 and 1'4", 281 pounds when he was drafted. So similar to Morris, except he ends up losing weight to play an uh, outside linebacker. He was a 3'4 outside linebacker, and uh, he used to get it in, man. Sacks right here. He had 12 and a half sacks in like his 10th or 11th year. So I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. I already know what you guys think. It doesn't matter. If Seahawks do it, you guys are just going to be like, it's the greatest thing of all time. So, listen, I'm getting to these guys from what interests me. Stop saying you want to see this and that right there. If you want to do that, man, don't you stop having short arms and deep pockets. Reach into that, man. Make sure you're supporting the content. They be pulling these content ID claims uh, when you start using this college film. So, that's why I just try to do the NFL stuff and really work with the NFL film. They pull those too, but not as much as far as the stuff um, on the game pass. So there you have it, man. So Mike Moore is definitely intriguing to me. Uh, of course, that damn Kenny McIntosh pick is incredible. Um, but Seahawks had a pretty good draft. No doubt about that. No doubt about it. All right, so we'll get to some more right here. But let me know uh, what you think about Mike Moore and his prospects. And let me know. I guess you will, guys, will let me know about the 3-4 versus the 4-3 and where you see them fitting in. I. I it's your boy, Mid-Atlantic Murph, a.k.a. Jersey Murph in the building. Strike the band. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.